Well, good evening, everyone. Um, this is Olga Garcia, your, the city engineer, your city engineer for the city of Hoboken. Today, we'll be presenting the concepts that we have come up for the Sinatra Drive redesign. And before we can go on to the presentation, I'll let the mayor introduce this presentation. Go ahead, Mayor Fallon. Uh, thanks, Olga, and uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for taking uh, time out of your busy schedules to join us uh, for what's a, a really historic project for Hoboken uh, and the, its uh, its waterfront uh, and the future of the waterfront. So this is a, a public meeting, a community meeting to get uh, community input um, for the Sinatra Drive uh, redesign project. Uh, this meeting was preceded by a public survey, uh, an online survey, where um, we received a substantial amount of input uh, in terms of uh, what the public uh, would like to see uh, in terms of uh, the vision for uh, the future of Sinatra Drive, um, both what they would like to see as well as what they would not like to see, um, as well as um, identifying some of the challenges um, some of the constraints and opportunities uh, in connection uh, with uh, what we can do here. So um, with um, a lot of hard work and diligence, um, both uh, Director Sharp from uh, the Department of Transportation Planning, along with our city engineer, um, uh, Greg Franchisi, our planner, uh, partnering with uh, Kim Lee Horn, um, and, uh, and other um, uh, uh, professionals have really come up with um, uh, some conceptual options um, that, uh, that they'll present to you. Um, and uh, really the purpose of this meeting is uh, to present those options and then um, you know, try to get or solicit additional feedback um, in terms of the vision for Sinatra Drive, um, you know, even down to um, whatever level of detail, um, you know, you'd like to uh, specify as a member of the public. Uh, just remember, this is your, this is your meeting. Um, this is a meeting that's, uh, and um, just not just a meeting, but a process that's um, community-based, uh, citizen-driven, um, and uh, we want to have um, a project that we can all be proud of um, and one that reflects the desires um, and the best interests of the residents of Hoboken. So with that, I will pass it on to um, Olga, who I, I, I believe will um, pass it on to um, whoever is presenting tonight. But thank you very much for attending. Thank you so much, Mayor. We, we, we can start the presentation. We're going to see an overview of what's ahead of us. We have, we just went through the introduction. Our design team, it, the, the project manager is Matt Shinton from Kimberly Horn. And pretty much this is the agenda for today. We're going to go over the project timeline, the results from the online survey that was provided. We're going to review the design concepts and the options that we have for you guys to vote and get a feel from, from the concepts that were developed as part of this survey responses. And at the end of the day, uh, within, I, I guess at 7.45 around that time, we'll open up the Q&A. We're expecting that this presentation will last around 45 minutes. And But that's not to say that if you have a question, you can put it on the chat, Q&A, or Slido. And we will be monitoring those three um, platforms, the two on Zoom and Slido to you know, get that feedback. And we, if we see we can answer the question at that time, we will. Or sometimes that question will be able to be addressed at, you know, at the following slide. So we'll do that. And then we'll let you know what, what are the next steps. So without further ado, I, I leave it to Matt to take it over. All right. Thanks, Olga. Um, good evening, everybody. I'm Matt Shinton from Kimley Horn, uh, the consultant project manager for the project. Uh, also on the team uh, is Ingenuity in Infrastructure, uh, Hunter Research, uh, and Imperial Traffic and Data Collection. Uh, and we'll sort of move right along through our agenda. Uh, as Olga had mentioned, uh, we're using a Slido uh, platform tonight. Uh, so interweaved into this PowerPoint presentation, there will be opportunities for you to give direct feedback on some of the slides that um, are out there. Um, so we're gonna kind of roll through. Um, 
So as, as most of you are probably aware after taking the survey, um, the project stretches from River and 4th Street all the way up to Sinatra, Hudson and 11th. Um, and then the, the city sec secured some grant funding, which Olga um, can mention Yes, this is a grant from the, from the NJDOT. We first obtained a bikeway grant in the amount of 325,000 in the year 2021 for the fiscal year 2021. And then the municipal aid grant for um, roadways and resurfacing of $876,000. So those are the funds that we have secured. Those funds will be utilized for the construction uh, of the project. Um, the city, we uh, cover the cost the soft cost for this project is assigned and the construction administration. And now I'll give it over to um, Director Sharp to go over what is really the vision and, and what is the goal that this project is uh, trying to achieve. All right, thank you, Olga. Um, can somebody help me change the next slide, please? So the project timeline, uh, this project kicked off in the winter. So a contract was awarded to Kimley Horn uh, back in, at the end of last year. And uh, so far they've been undergoing existing conditions. Uh, they've been uh, developing the public outreach component, which included uh, stakeholder meetings, the survey that's been mentioned a few times now, um, and, and, and now this uh, public meeting number one. We are hoping to get to final design uh, by the end of the summer and then uh, transitioning into uh, the construction phase of the project. So going out to bid in the fall uh, and then awarding a contract uh, by the end of 2022. And then sometime during uh, early 2023, probably the spring uh, construction will begin and completion would, would be estimated to be completed sometime during the summer of 2023. <clears throat> Director Sharp, if you can go back to the la to the previous line, if you can share what this will represent in terms of the green circuit for the city. Sure. So uh, this would this project would essentially uh, fill a gap in the green circuit. The green circuit has been a concept. I believe since the 2004 master plan that envisions a, uh, a circuit around the perimeter of the city that would be uh, used for uh, biking and walking. It would function largely like, like a multi-use path. Um, so for the biking component, in some cases here, the pedestrian component as well, where there are some, some gaps or limitations within this corridor, uh, this project would effectively be filling one of the most significant remaining gaps in the green circuit network on the east side of, of the city. Um, so uh, that's very exciting. Um, and uh, we're very much looking forward to, to getting to that point sometime next year. Uh, and this project's also um, being undertaken within the larger context of other waterfront improvements. Um, last year, there was a state of good repair project for uh, Lower Sinatra Drive on the south waterfront, which rehabilitated some of the pavers on the, on the Hudson River Waterfront Walkway. Um, then uh, there is a, another project that's in the works that's uh, going to be paid for at no cost to the city that would rehabilitate the South Waterfront Bikeway uh, in the near future. Um, and then the city's in the process of uh, acquiring Union Dry Dock and uh, there are other improvements in the north end uh, related to the former uh, Monarch site as well. Um, and eventually the Cove Park, if you go all the way to um, roughly the intersection of Park Avenue and 15th Street, which is a project that's being done in connection with the Rebuild by Design uh, project. Excellent, thank you very much. So as part of the project, we've um, have been leading a public engagement um, initiative, which has taken uh, the form of both stakeholder meetings uh, and project walkthroughs uh, in February. It was really cold when we were out there, um, as well as a community visioning survey uh, that was open from March 24th to April 9th um, that was online. Uh, the city had put out a couple of PR blasts. Uh, we extended it a little bit, um, and you all responded. 
Um, we had about just over 1,200 survey responses. Um, we got a lot of likes and dislikes uh, feedback from you all. Uh, we also got feedback on the current utilization of Sinatra Drive and sort of the areas uh, immediately surrounding. Um, and it helped us to establish some priorities for the redesign and the development of the, um, the concept designs. So all that put together, packaged up, um, was sort of the basis of design for us to inform our preliminary concept designs, which we'll get into. Um, and the next couple of slides will be some highlights of uh, from that survey, the data points that we were able to sort of glean out of all of that. Um, so obviously we, we asked you for what are your top priorities within that survey. Um, landscaping obviously is one of them, green, greenify the, the corridor, the corridor um, ensuring safe bicycle circulation, uh, adding both street furniture and streetscaping um, to add a sense of place to the, the corridor, as well as improving safety uh, of pedestrians and as well as calming the traffic on Sinatra Drive. Um, so we did, we got 1200 response, over 1200 responses uh, and it, it came from a lot of different corners of the city. Uh, it was very well um, participated in um, and had a really good reach. So breaking down the survey results a little bit further. Um, so we had about just over half of the survey respondents were between the age of 30 and 50. 27% um, were between the age of 50 and 70. 15% uh, were between the age of 18 and 29. And then the last 4% are made up of either under 18 years of age or over 70 years of age. Um, so a pretty decent cross section uh, of the population taking uh, the survey. So then we asked another question, which is how do you relate to the quarter uh, and sort of how do you relate to Hoboken in general? Uh, and 90% of those who, um, and you were able to select more than one. So if you're doing the math, you'll, you'll see that uh, there's definitely over 100%, but you're able to select more than one. So 90% of the survey respondents were residents of Hoboken um, or, and then there's a good percentage of people who both work uh, and uh, own. Then there's about 13% between attend Stephen College uh, as well as, as visits uh, Hoboken regularly. So we, uh, you know, cars, cars, bikes, trains, planes, everything is, is modes of transportation. Um, and we want to know how you got to Sinatra Drive. Um, and overwhelmingly, 90%, <clears throat> again, you could select uh, more than one here, um, but overwhelmingly there's an 89% walk uh, mode split on how people uh, typically get to Sinatra Drive. I think that's pretty evidenced by the city's walkable nature, as well as the, the dots that we just shared with you that um, it, it's a pretty um, close proximity for the residents um, who took the survey and who also live in the area to, to get there. Um, and again, we, we asked how many times are you on Sinatra Drive? Um, and we found that about you know, just over 65% of survey respondents are there more than two times a week. Uh, and there's a, a very large percentage of you uh, that took the survey um, that are there way more than, than that. They're, they're there almost every single day. So we asked in there, what, what do you love about Sinatra Drive? Um, and you can see, I think you all know it, uh, is that there's a lot of things to love about Sinatra Drive. Um, and a lot of it comes down to the, the views and the waterfront access um, and being able to have active transportation out on the corridor. So we're building off of what you love on Sinatra Drive to hopefully uh, make these improvements something that creates that place that everybody is know, knows about Sinatra Drive. So this is where we're gonna ask you to, <clears throat> to hop in, uh, join us in this presentation. If you scan the QR code, you'll, uh, you'll arrive at uh, the pub or sort of this interactive web tool called Slido. Uh, you can also go to slido.com and there's a little window there that you can enter 374454. Um, and the next couple of slides uh, are survey questions, live interactive polling questions um, that let us know a little bit about who's with us tonight. So we'll jump right into those. So sort of similar question to what we asked the, the, the survey respondents, um, but go ahead and vote. Are you a resident of Hoboken? Are you employed in Hoboken? Or are you just interested generally in this project? And we'll give it a, a couple of seconds to, to register here. All right, it looks like we've got a lot of, got a lot of residents. We've got, a, we've got an interested and an employed. Um, good. 
So pretty typical to, to where we are with our, our general survey outreach. It looks like a majority of you are residents of Hoboken. So thank you for joining us tonight. Um, you know, please let us know one word that describes Sinatra Drive to you. Um, and this will populate as what's called a word cloud. Um, and we'll start bringing in all your responses. Park view, beautiful. Got a couple of beautifuls and views. So <clears throat> as the words get bigger, it means there's more and more uh, responses to that similar um, Vine needs help. Yes, that's why we're here. Um, <clears throat> waterfront connected, uh, waterfront again, refreshing. Um, nature, bike, yes, active transportation, uh, the park-like setting, um, the connectivity between not only the river and the view, but as well as the neighborhood and the city. All right, similar question. Uh, kind of wanted to, to know who's with us and, and how you all in the attending tonight get there. And I'm going to take a wild guess that if um, most of you are residents on the, the webinar tonight, that they were going to have a pretty high percentage between bike and walk, um, which seems like we are. It's a very, uh, it's a very easy place to walk as well. All right, so we'll get to the we'll get to the meaty part. Um, this is our you know our conceptual design as presented tonight. Um, there you're going to see as we walk through this. Um, one of the the common themes that walks through this entire design is that we're maintaining a, an 11 foot minimum travel lane for vehicles along the corridor. There are some areas where it gets a little wider than 11 foot. Um, and that's due to the fact that we need to accommodate this as a truck route um, and be able to make sure that emergency vehicles, buses, and trucks can all make it around some of these curves. Where we were able to, uh, we narrowed that back down to an 11 foot. Um, and along the green circuit, there's a minimum 12 foot bikeway, six foot bike lane in either direction uh, protected behind a median. Um, in this particular area between river Street um, and Sinatra Drive South. Uh, we're proposing two ac accessible parking spaces as well as a painted um, bike lane coming from River Street north along Sinatra Drive to connect to the green circuit. Uh, we're also expanding the sidewalk slightly uh, in front of the Little League fields um, as well as um, being contextually sensitive to the World War II Memorial. Um, we needed to uh, gain a little bit of room uh, behind the curb uh, to fit the green circuit and the bikeway in, uh, but we're proposing to leave the World War II Memorial uh, undisturbed. So this is a conceptual rendering of what <clears throat> that plan view would look like. And as it comes around the World War II Memorial, um, you can see minimally impactful design, um, new curb, new sidewalk, uh, protection um, for bicyclists coming through the green circuit, uh, as well as refuge islands for pedestrians. And now we start moving um, north along the corridor. Um, this is where Fifth Street comes into Sinatra Drive um, in front of the soccer fields in Blue Eyes. Uh, there'll be a raised pedestrian crosswalk at the existing pedestrian crossing at the signalized crossing there. Um, we'll be increasing vegetated areas along the east side of the bikeway. And if, if I may interject, yep. Go going ahead, back Olga. to the other slide. I, I just want to reiterate that the memorial um, it will not be, if we can go to back to slide 17. This is a concept that we have for this area. As you can see, we don't have an option. And just we want to reiterate that the memorial will not be relocated as part of this project. And, and I would like you guys to pay attention to um, the next um, portion of the section of Sinatra. Uh, there we're going to have two options, option A and option B. So um, just pay attention because at the end of those two options, we're going to ask you to vote which, which one is your preferred alternatives. Thank you, Olga. 
So in this section, uh, as I said, Fifth Street comes into Sinatra Drive. It's by the soccer field and Blue Eyes. The existing pedestrian crossing will be converted to a raised pedestrian crossing, uh, both for pedestrian safety uh, and accessibility, as well as traffic calming. Um, there'll be a, a parking area on the east side along the soccer field. Um, and the bikeway obviously will continue along Sinatra Drive, uh, separated by a concrete median. Um, and then there'll be some some replaced sidewalk along Fifth Street in some of the areas, as well as um, redesignation of parking uh, along Fifth Street as well. So as Olga said, there are two different options going to be presented here. Um, this is option A. Um, we're going to flip over to option B. Um, the main difference here is that uh, option B provides a, another uh, six spots along the western side of Sinatra Drive. There are some trade-offs there. You'll see that as a common theme throughout this presentation that the options all include trade-offs. Uh, the trade-offs here um, are reducing the landscape by about the size of a one-bedroom apartment. Um, so about 900 or eight to 900 square feet. <clears throat> um, and then the, there's a potential impact to the historic wall uh, on Fifth Street um, that would need further evaluation and potentially uh, mitigation uh, if that wall is um, impacted. Olga, Ryan, is there anything you want to add to this before we flip over to the, the question? Yes, the main highlight of this option is to, we, we met with stakeholders regarding um, the needs uh, at this particular location, and, and uh, Lieutenant Rotondi, if you would like to jump in. We have a very high usage of the field and also the director um, of health services, Leo, uh, Leo Pellegrini, informed us of the turnout and the usage of the parents when they bring their children to, to the field. So that, that's why we took in consideration, we were, we were very sensitive to the needs of parking in this area. And, and that's not to say that we will keep evaluating Fifth Street as it comes down to see what other options um, for parking, there may be to accommodate, you know, the parents and then the users of this field. Lieutenant, you'd like to add something to that end and as far as public safety and access to this? Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, the additional parking there um, does weigh in on this situation here because we have the two fields with the Little League field on top and the soccer field on the bottom. So um, it's important for everybody to uh, take a good look at these two options and weigh in uh, with the raised crosswalks and the parking on the east side of this. Uh, I'm sorry, the west side will uh, definitely help out with the vehicular traffic in this area. Okay. And, and Olga, to, to add on to that, um, sorry, Ryan. <laughs> um, so uh, to add just onto that, we, we also coordinated obviously with emergency services in this area as well. You'll see that there's um, some areas of painted median um, where it's not concrete. It's to maintain both um, maintenance access for the city, for the soccer field, as well as the, the waterfront, uh, as well as emergency access for emergency services, the waterfront, uh, as well as the soccer field for any sort of ambulance or fire needs or police needs uh, that may arise there. Director Sharp, I think that's awesome. No, you, you, you guys covered it. I was saying thank you to, to the lieutenant for his feedback. Um, yeah, I think we're ready to go to the question. All right. Okay. So again, we're going to use Slido. Um, please let us know your preference on the presented option, which was option A, um, or the additional parking on the west side um, option. At nine people responded. Eleven, just waiting for it to level off. All right. Oh, one more, one more snuck in. All right, we had about 12 people respond um, to that one. Um, so we'll take this feedback as we develop our, our concept plans. Um, all of this data, I should also say, um, with you responding tonight on Slido, uh, will be pulled into. Um, and inform our design decisions going forward. I'm sure it's something Olga will cover again later, but just to reiterate that. So thank you for voting. Matt, can you speak briefly about uh, the historic uh, nature of the Fifth Street uh, retaining wall? And sure. 
what, 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 what you guys looked into as part of uh, the scope of work for this project? Certainly. So the, this street wall was um, evaluated by our subconsultant Hunter Research um, in conjunction with their historic and cultural resource assessment um, that we're required to complete as part of this project. Um, their determination uh, of that uh, resource was that it's um, historic and would require mitigation if disturbed as part of this project. Uh, additionally to that, um, our scope of work also included a structural analysis um, or stability analysis of that wall uh, in its current state, um, which was completed, um, has noted that there's likely some attention to be done to it at some point in the future, um, but in the current state, it is structurally sound the way it is, um, but that would be pending any sort of um, changes to um, loading in front of the wall, and by loading, I mean any additional weight put onto that if we were to move uh, parking or, or anything else, um, additional landscaping, anything else that would be heavy in front of that wall, uh, could create some differential settling that would have to be evaluated. All right, so now as we're moving north, um, we're sort of past the soccer field here at this point. Uh, we're in front of the patio garage and the Stevens physical plant office. Um, and there's an existing crosswalk there today. Um, it will also be converted to a raised pedestrian crosswalk. Um, the bikeway obviously continues as a 12 foot bikeway. Um, both entrances to the Stevens uh, property are maintained. Uh, you'll see uh, median breaks um, along the, the center of this uh, view picture here um, that uh, show where they're going to come in and out of. There'll be additional signing and pavement marking there um, to promote safely safety of vehicles and pedestrians crossing both of those driveways. Um, and there's no par no parking proposed uh, within this section of Sinatra Drive. We're also gonna be widening the sidewalk in this section. Uh, Stevens has a force uh, sewer force main that goes overhead in this section uh, and the sidewalk currently narrows down there. Um, the sidewalk will be increased for uh, in this section somewhere be to a final width of somewhere between eight to 10 feet. Very good, thank you. And as we're moving up, um, this is in the section of, of the gazebo and sort of where the, the uh, existing raised planters are as well. Um, we're proposing yet another uh, pedestrian crossing and some may ask, where's the pedestrian crossing going to? Uh, the, the sidewalk on the opposite side, the west side of the road uh, is proposed to remain uh, in place. Uh, so this will provide both traffic calming as well as access to the cross or to the sidewalk on the opposite side of the street. Um, again, concrete median is proposed uh, to protect the bike lane or the bikeway through this entire section. Uh, the existing um, cutouts for parking will be converted or proposed to be converted to vegetated area. Um, there will be some rehabilitation of the existing uh, raised plantings. Um, and then there's a Again, this is showing no parking in this section. This is the other half of, of those raised um, planted areas and the parking areas. There would also be a raised pedestrian crosswalk near the skate park um, as we get up towards Union Dry Dock. Before we, con before we continue, yep. uh, there's a question about aerial utilities on this project. And just to be clear, this project does not contemplate the relocation to underground of aerial utilities. Thank you, Olga. So this one, and I, I guess I failed to mention, this is also an option A, option B area uh, of the project. So option A, let's just give everybody a, a quick second to absorb it and take it in a little again, um, but Raised planters will be rehabilitated. Existing parking areas will become vegetated areas, um, protected bikeway through the whole area, um, and 11 foot um, minimum travel lanes uh, as well. So as we <clears throat> move into option B here, uh, we evaluated uh, the ability to add in um, an additional parking area. Again, trade-offs um, between gaining parking spaces as well as um, sort of what we're trying to do uh, along the corridor. Um, two of the raised planters would be uh, call them reused and rehabilitated. One of them would have to be removed and we would have to uh, uh, reduce the, the vegetated area uh, by a little bit on this section to accommodate 
um, the parking lane, but essentially the rest of the, the cross section of the, this section of the corridor would remain unchanged. Um, so again, we're going to flip into a, a Slido poll um, and give you all a chance to weigh in on um, the two presented options uh, that are shown to you right now. And then just to clarify, Matt, while we go through this, uh, when we talk about landscaping, uh, that can mean a lot of things, but in this context, it can mean anything from, uh, you know, low level plantings to, you know, shade trees, right? Um, so, you know, there's a lot of different types of uh, potential landscaping that could go in these areas that uh, would be expanded through um, any of the uh, alternative options that, that Matt just presented. Yep. Yeah, thanks for adding that. Um, and that's right on, which is this is a conceptual level design at this point in time. Uh, final planting schedules, um, planting mixes, any of that um, finer details of design are yet to be determined, um, but could range from, from all those things that um, Director Sharp has mentioned. All right. Looks like we're getting an overwhelming uh, response to options A tonight. <laughs> um, so we'll, uh, we'll keep struggling along through the quarter. I know it's uh, reading into our time here. So um, this is a stretch in front of Union Dry Dock. Um, we had received obviously a lot of responses to our surveys. One of those overwhelming responses uh, was a wider sidewalk in front of Union Dry Dock. Um, so the, the project proposes to expand the sidewalk by uh, basically twofold. Right now it's about a four and a half foot sidewalk. We're going to expand it um, to about a nine to 10 foot sidewalk along the whole frontage. Uh, we'll also be um, evaluating sign uh, post locations um, and surface utilities like fire hydrants to create a, a wider clear zone uh, for pedestrians to walk along this part of the corridor. Um, but again, we're, we're holding a protected um, bikeway here. Uh, obviously the median has been reduced. This is an area of the corridor that is narrower than the rest of it. Um, and it'll be uh, essentially a back-to-back -back curb. <clears throat> and then there'll be uh, 11 foot um, travel lanes uh, along this section. And this is a, a conceptual rendering of what that would, would look like. Um, so you can see the bikeway uh, in the green Durablend, um, the travel lanes, the wider sidewalk along Union Dry Dock, um, and then the maintained uh, sidewalk on the west side as well. So on this view, Matt, can you mm -hmm. provide linear footage? What is the width of the sidewalk? What is the width of the bike lane? Sure. And what is um, the width of the travel way? So the width of the sidewalk in this for this um, this view is uh, ten feet. The bikeway would what be what is existing, Matt? What existing is, is uh, it varies a little bit, Olga, somewhere between four and a half to five feet. Um, so it's going up to about ten feet in this area. Again, there's a little bit of variability in that. Um, then it would be a consistent twelve foot bikeway, uh, six foot lanes uh, in either direction for that. There's a two foot um, median. Uh, to separate the bikeway from the travel lanes. Then there'd be two 11 foot travel lanes for a total of 22 feet. Uh, and then a, a, again, a variable sidewalk from four to five feet on the other side. So just to be clear, this is the area where uh, in front of Union Drive Dock where we have the multi-use path, correct, Director Sharp? Sorry, I was on mute. Yes, yes, that's correct. Uh, and so uh, as was kind of just mentioned, this, this is trying to accommodate or in, improve the existing multi-use path so that it's more comfortable for pedestrians and bicyclists. Right now, both users are kind of sharing that path and at times it can feel uh, kind of narrow or, or full of potential conflicts. Um, so here we're doubling, we would be doubling the width of the sidewalk to provide uh, much more space for, for pedestrians um, and then providing, providing cyclists a dedicated space for them to ride to minimize the conflicts between the two. And then um, you can see where the, the black, this really a beautiful black uh, iron fence is here. Um, I'm joking, of course. That's the Union Dry Dock property. And uh, you know there may be an opportunity in the future to um, incorporate uh, that site into um, uh, you know, the, the redesign of this area here. So um, this would be kind of like a temporary condition um, 
but still providing an improvement for uh, for pedestrians as well. Mm. Yes, the hope the hope is that um, in the future, when things move along, that um, we will be able to connect the waterfront walkway in front of Union Dry Dock, so pedestrians wouldn't have a need to use the sidewalk, and, and that will be uh, in the future, in the foreseeable future. At this time, we cannot say because we we're in negotiations, so yeah, right. this is the compromise right now. It'd be kind of like Southwest Park, how, uh, if you're familiar with Southwest Park, the park kind of flows into the, the sidewalk and the pedestrian right of way um, on the perimeter of a couple sides of the park. So that, that's a possibility for the future here. Uh, but for now, it's important that uh, as we went through this design process, we, we did everything we could to try to, uh, you know, balance the demands of, of, you know, multiple forms of transportation here, so. All right. And we're continuing to move up up the corridor. We're starting to head um, to what would be the the end of the green circuit for Frank Sinatra Drive to then turn onto Sinatra Drive North. Um, and then there's a section between Sinatra Drive North and Hudson and 11th Street. Um, this one will uh, throw you off for a loop this time. We'll have three options uh, for this one. Um, so this uh, between Sinatra Drive North and Hudson and 11th, uh, this concept shows a protected northbound only bike lane. Um, there's a facing addition of some vegetated area. Um, parking would be on the east side of Sinatra Drive only. Um, and there'd be a raised pedestrian crossing uh, at Sinatra Drive North and Sinatra Drive um, for traffic calming and pedestrian safety. safety. Um, again, the, the sidewalk in front of Union Dry Dock would be doubled in width from the existing today. Um, so this is just a, a quick conceptual rendering of what that uh, protected bikeway uh, would look like. Um, those cars actually wouldn't wouldn't be there, um, but it would uh, show that the bikeway, there'd be a median where the cars could park out on the travel lane. Um, the green circuit would then turn right uh, into Sinatra Drive North and continue on north along the waterfront. Um, let, me start, let me interject here yeah. for the options, just to be clear. Uh, for all three options, we're this is this connection will happen to the green circuit on Sinatra Drive North. The options, the variables are north of this um, connection, so it will be between Sinatra Drive North and Hudson Street. That's where the options may vary. You may continue, Matt. All right. Thanks for clarifying. I'm about to see that. <laughs> Oops. Um, so this is as as that section, um, option A terminates uh, at the project limits of Hudson and 11th Street. Um, the protected bikeway would transition uh, onto Hudson, uh, where there are shadows on the other side of 11th Street. There's also bike lanes on 11th Street. Um, there also be provided a bike box uh, in front of the stop bar uh, for bicyclists to then sort of reintegrate with traffic uh, in this section. And just to know, and Lieutenant Rotondi is here, we, we have, we are only at a conceptual um, stage right now. We have yet to do the connection. This is a very, uh, an intersection that have a lot of movements and conflicts. And we have discussed this with, with the police department. So we're concerned of, you know, bringing additional cyclists to this intersection without having proper signage. And we want to avoid um, putting them in a position where there can be conflicts. One of the options that, options that you will see is to have all the cyclists continue on Sinatra Drive up north and be able to um, make that left turn onto 11th Street and be able to make that decision. Either go south on Hudson Street, west on 11th Street, or north on Hudson Street. So um, we have three options here, but I just want to clarify that this is conceptual and we're going back up for how we're going to work on, on this intersection. There's also future enhancement that Hudson County will be working at this intersection of, of 11th and Hudson Street. So we have to you know, run it by then and make sure that when they do their improvement, we can add whatever improvements we do with, with this bike. But again, um, Lieutenant Rotani, if you can share what is, what is the view from public safety as, a, as, as it relates to um, having cyclists approach 
um, Hudson Street from Sinatra Drive at this point? Well, I think I think the ultimate goal here is uh, safety, safety for vehicles, safety for the pedestrians, safety for bicyclists. Um, we have a large protected bike path over here, and it just seems for a, a, a safety standpoint, making a right onto Sinatra Drive North and then making a left onto 11th Street to approach that 11th and Hudson intersection, uh, which is uh, 90 degrees is, is, is a much safer way to navigate through this area instead of continuing northbound on Sinatra Drive and then approaching 11th Street on an angle where uh, sight lines may be affected. And again, that area, we would have to work closely with the county as their roadway. Um, but exactly. utilize, right. utilizing 11th Street would be, on a, from our standpoint, a, a, a safer alternative. All right. So I just want to make that clarification on, on this presentation that this is just conceptual design. Uh, we haven't done, we're proceeding to 30% engineering, and we will bet that uh, further. So whatever results we get from the engineering studies and, and discussing with the traffic engineers from Hudson County, we will determine whether or not we it will be feasible to have this um, bike lane on this portion. But nevertheless, it was done and we wanted to present it to the public to see, um, to hear your feedback. You may continue. Thank you. So we'll move into uh a conceptual rendering of what Hudson uh, at 11th Street would look like with the protected bikeway, the median, um, and its transition into 11th Street. All right, and option B, um, essentially uh, it becomes a non-protected uh, painted uh, bike lane on Frank Sinatra Drive uh, in this area. Uh, curb extensions and the raised uh, pedestrian crosswalk uh, would remain. Uh, and parking is established on both sides of the street. Um, there would also be some vegetated area uh, added um, sort of to the, the plan left of this as well. Uh, would add uh, enough vegetation for about a, a two bed. If you looked at your two bedroom apartment, um, that's about how much vegetation would be able to add uh, in this area. And then there's option C. Um, <clears throat> option C um, promotes uh, bicyclists to make a right on Sinatra Drive North. Um, parking is established on both sides of the street, um, and we're able to add an additional landscaped area almost in the tune of the footprint, uh, interior footprint of a brownstone uh, all along uh, in front of um, uh, Elysian Park there on the, the west side in Maxwell. So we'll, oh, go ahead. For, the, for this alternative, uh, cyclists going northbound uh, would have to make a right onto Sinatra Drive North and then make a left onto 11th Street uh, where there are bike lanes there currently along the median uh, in order to connect to the bike network and continue further west. Okay. Thank you. All right, so we have another um, Slido poll um, to get your feedback on the three presented options uh, for this section of Sinatra Drive between Sinatra Drive North and Hudson. have typically had about 13 people weigh in. We might have lost one or two, um, but it looks like it leveled off there. Oh, one more. All right. Thank you for your input. Um, so in one word, what did you like best about the concepts presented here tonight? Bikes, less parking, protected bike lane. Last one, two words and protected bike. <laughs> three word. I like that how somebody connected three yeah. words, in one word. Very clever. <laughs> so it, although it's still conceptual, it, it looks like we're we're trying to be on the right path here. No pun intended. Um, is promoting safety and and active transportation. 
All right. This is more of a dreamer question, but, <clears throat> and we'll see if anybody puts a whole bunch of words together without spaces, but in, you know, one word, uh, maybe two, uh, what's your dream for Sinatra Drive? Car free, no cars, take an early lead. No utility lines, there you go. I like that one. Great. That, this is a so, great, this is a great feedback by far. Yeah. It was at the, at the conceptual um, design, but we will be bringing some amenities for bicycle parking, absolutely. Great. All right, this is maybe a loaded question, but uh, based on what you've seen uh, on the conceptual level here tonight, on a scale of one to five, how do you, how do you think um, this looks? Ooh, rough. And then, yeah, I think it's worth mentioning, this includes like the whole uh, gamut yep. of potential options, right? Did you see a, yep. a combination of concepts that you like? Um, you know, it could be, you know, A, B, and C, you know, depending on, Southern section A, central section B, you know, northern section C, for example, um, or it could be all A or it could be all B. Um, and do, do you see a path to getting to um, a concept that you really like ultimately? Yeah, very, very good point. Um, and again, this is this is conceptual design, 30%, uh, 60%, 90, 100, all the way through to construction will be informed of by the survey that was put out, as well as the feedback receiving uh, in uh, in a public meeting like this. All right. So overall, not bad. We've got some improvement to go, but uh, we'll get there. All right. So what's next for Sinatra Drive? Um, conceptual plans and, and the presentation uh, from tonight will be uploaded uh, to the Sinatra Drive uh, project website, and the website link is below. Um, there'll be a second survey. Um, basically directed on plan feedback um, that will open up within a, a week or so uh, of this meeting. So the concepts as well as um, some survey questions and feedback forms for that will open up on the website to get your input. Um, on completion of that survey, we're gonna move um, this design into what's called 30% design. 30% um, design establishes the project limits. Uh, it also helps us inform a preliminary opinion of cost um, to see how much this is all going to cost. Um, and again, an idyllic world uh, that doesn't change, um, but in uh, today's construction market, that is a, a constant variable. Um, and also below, there's an email address, Sinatra Drive Project at HobokenNJ.gov. Um, please feel free to use that if there's any other um, feedback that wasn't captured in the surveys or within the Slido um, polls tonight. Um, so we're going to move into a format, <clears throat> um, which is a QA and a uh, session. Uh, so Olga. Ryan, myself, and Lieutenant Rotundi um, will be fielding some questions that popped up in the Slido uh, as the presentation went on. So we'll start answering some of those questions in a little more directed way, and it'll all be moderated by Greg. All right. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm just going to start with this, the questions we've received in Slido um, and also sure. work into the chat if there were some questions that we might have missed. Um, so the first question. Um, is can parents use the Stevens parking lot instead? Um, I think this is in reference to the two alternatives um, down by uh, the the soccer field. Um, I'm not Director sure who's. Shar, Director Shar, you would like to address that with regards to um, residents' use. Yeah, sure. So um, I, I assume uh, that this. Uh, question is directed to the to the Griffith law, which is located um, along the uh, east side of Sinatra Drive, uh, roughly in the area of Fifth Street. Um, and the, the, there's currently uh, about 50 parking spaces that are dedicated there right now for uh, resident permit holders during uh, certain times of the day. And um, it may be possible that those could be used by resident permit holders um, that are also parents if they're attending a sporting event or something else nearby at that time. Um, uh, but beyond that, you know, we we can talk to Stevens or would have to talk to Stevens. It's their property, frankly, 
uh, about any other um, expanded use of, of those 50 spaces uh, beyond the time frames that currently exist or, or beyond uh, you know, the exclusive use by resident permit holders. Thanks, Director. So the next two questions um, are related. Uh, they're both about uh, vehicle circulation. So the, the first is why not get rid of the car lanes? And the second one is why not make Sinatra one way north like it is almost everywhere else? Um, Matt, perhaps. Yeah, so Greg, Greg, I can, I can start and I, I think Olga, you'll probably have something to follow up with, uh, with me on that. I but I, I can let Lieutenant Rotondi take that one. Okay. Uh, you, you have to repeat that. I'm sorry. The uh, question was, um, why not make Sinatra one way north like it is almost everywhere, everywhere else? And um, there was a related question that we're going to try and answer at the same time that says, why not get rid of the car lanes? Uh, that would put so much strain on Hudson Street and Washington Street. The simple, simple answer is this. We, we cannot, we, we, it's, a, it's an influx of vehicles going on Hudson Street and Washington Street. That's the simple Thanks. answer. Thanks, Lieutenant. Uh, Olga, Ryan, I think, I think, I can move on to the next question. There's nothing else. There was a traffic study done uh, over a decade ago uh, that, in, that looked at the possibility of, of converting Sinatra Drive to one way north. And uh, as Lieutenant Rotundi mentioned, it, it, it would have led to uh, impacts, especially during the weekends on Hudson Street, uh, which would be effectively the, the, the southbound couplet um, to, to northbound Sinatra Drive. Um, and, and the, the traffic volumes that currently utilize Sinatra are high enough that uh, it, it's, it's in our best interest, we believe, to, to maintain uh, vehicle traffic uh, in a two-way uh, traffic flow on Sinatra Drive at this time. All right, so the next question is, um, can't the travel lanes be reduced to 10 feet here? It would give, um, it would give an extra two feet and, and that's cut off. It would give an extra two feet, one to make a three foot buffer, another for extra sidewalk space. So, so Greg, I can take that. So as part of, uh, and I think uh, Olga had mentioned it earlier, as part of our collaboration um, with the emergency services uh, for the city, uh, there was a request to maintain a slightly, um, I guess the 11 foot lanes uh, for both for the mobility of their equipment uh, along the corridor as well as provide some areas um, for products, uh, you know, the space there that if there's an emergency vehicle traveling along Sinatra Drive, um, that there's ability for people to pull over and have those emergency vehicles pass um, since there'll be a, a constraining median on, on one side. Obviously, it's wider today than it will be in the future. And, and if I may add um, this, this uh, overall, a general comment, this presentation for those who are recently joining is being recorded and you will be able to watch it back at, at our, by going to our website, the project website. So if, if you, uh, because I see some questions that have been answered, you, you can go back to the presentation, you will be able to, to see the answer to those questions. So the next question. question. So the next question is um, regarding the intersection of Sinatra Drive um, and uh, Hudson Street. Can we require cars to turn right um, and then on 11th instead of bikes? I think this is the configuration for the, the, the northern section of Sinatra Drive. So both that intersection and then maybe the intersection of Sinatra Drive and Sinatra Drive North. So what are they saying? Restrict the left? turn on Hudson? Uh, can we require cars to turn right and then on 11th instead of bikes? I think it's a question about, I think right now it's a southbound. Uh, there's no right turn. Yes, unfortunately this is a private road. So that was established when that private road was created. As I'm I was told 
So we don't have jurisdiction over that particular portion of Sinatra Drive North. It's a private road. It's a okay. private road. So the next question is um, about, uh, it says, if we need more space, why not wait to do all of this until the Union Dry Dock site is acquired? So Greg, I think that, oh, go ahead, know. Olga. We do not know when this is gonna happen and we don't know the timeline, but we have the grants funding and 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 we, this can be a temporary because it's not just, the Union Dry Dock is also the connection of the waterfront. And, and with that situation, we will do what we do with other park projects, a conceptual design. And so it's gonna take longer than. Right, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll jump in. Plan if we wait for that. I mean, you will have it eventually, but it's not gonna be so soon as we're having it in, on this project. Right. Thank you, thank you, Olga. Um, and, and I'll kind of piggyback on that a little bit. So uh, we have grant funding that is tied to certain design components of this project. One of them is the bikeway itself, which uh, the city of uh, a $350,000, I'm sorry, $325,000 uh, bikeway is grant for from NJDOT. This is one of the most competitive uh, grants um, the NJDOT offers. Typically, they only have a million dollars uh, for the entire state and have usually only about three or four total awards across the whole state. Um, and they often go towards uh, trails that are typically in more suburban or, um, you know, ex-urban areas, not, not urban areas like Hoboken. Um, so uh, we, we have to uh, award um, a contract for construction uh, within two years of receiving uh, the award letter for that grant. So there's there's a shot clock effectively on that. And so as Golga mentioned, we can't unfortunately wait around um, for Union Dry Dock to be in a position where we can kind of holistically design the street and the park um, collectively at the same time. So the best we can do right now, given our constraints and our timeline, is to design something uh, that's going to be as beneficial as possible in terms of improving safety for pedestrians, cyclists, uh, and, and drivers too, all modes of transportation here um, with the funds that we have uh, and the limitations we have within the current right of way, while not prohibiting uh, bigger changes uh, to that part of the corridor in the future. Hopefully yes. that makes sense. Correct. We will need to award. We, we're going by the earliest grant, which is the 2021. They give us two years to award from the from the date that we received notice that we get this grant. And that deadline is January 2023. We need to have an award of this grant, of the bike grant, by January 2023 to the DOT, or we are at risk of losing these funds. Okay, the next question is, um, why are we preserving the other sidewalk on the Western side of Sinatra Drive? So Olga I can, and Ryan, I can step in there um, because it's, it's there obviously today. Um, it's accessible. It provides another route for pedestrians to walk on. Um, it connects you know, both the West side of the, the corridor to the East side of the corridor. Um, and you know, re removing it is, is additional time, money, and cost uh, by the contractor to then remove uh, you know, all of that. There's also Sylvie's Cave on the other side that needs to be have access to, as well as some green space uh, up against the bluff. Uh, um, so that's, those are a couple of the reasons why it's all staying um, in the proposed plan right now, unless Olga or Ryan, you've got anything else to add. Thank you, Matt. Uh, so the next question is um, about landscaping. Why is there no landscape plan at this point? We are at the conceptual level. There will be landscape plans for this project, but at this stage, we are at a concept. Design. We are expecting to have a more uh, redefined concept to present at thirty percent design after this meeting. And when, when, is, when, when is the expectation, Matt? I don't recall from the timeline that we presented on the, on the, on the second slide for the timeline for that 30%. So 
So it, Olga, we're going to be progressing through design throughout this summer. Um, so obviously, sort of before the end of the summer, there'll be a more defined landscape plan uh, provided as part of those design package submissions. Thank you. All right, and I think this this might be the final question. Um, can non-residents park in the Stevens parking deck on the west side of Sinatra? I'm not sure, Ryan, maybe. Yeah, I, I don't believe that they can currently. That, that, that is restricted for uh, Stevens uh, students and staff at this time, I believe. That is correct. We don't have jurisdiction over the Stevens parking lot. And from what I've been told, they're at, at capacity for their personnel and their students. Right. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you all. I think I addressed all these questions um, that right. we received. Matt, do you mind yeah. just showing the slide again with the email address that people can submit questions yeah, to? Yeah, sure. Anything? So yeah, in addition, Greg, I saw one bleed through and I know Olga mentioned it, um, but uh, there's a question about the timeline for the project. It's in one of the earlier slides. Uh, and both the presentation and the recording of this presentation will be posted, um, so you'll be able to review that. Um, it was presented earlier in the meeting. All right, that is great. Thanks, Matt. Great so, mentions. if there's, oh, good. I was going to say, if there's any, if there's any outstanding questions, or if you want to uh, look at a, a a recording of this presentation, we'll be posting it to the project website, um, which is shown here at the bottom of the slide. Um, and then the project email address is Sinatra Drive Project at HobokenNJ.gov. And that's also on the um, project website. And you could submit questions to that email address. Thanks, Greg. Uh, any final questions coming in? Lightning round? <laughs> Uh, Greg, there was one question I saw in the Slido. Um, I'm assuming uh, this relates to the Hudson between Hudson and Sinatra Drive North. The question is, what happens if you want to bike south uh, in that section? Uh, you would bike south just like you do today. Uh, you'd be biking in the travel lanes. Um, you would then transition over into the Green Circuit Bikeway when you got to Sinatra Drive North uh, and Sinatra Drive. Did we get to the question about the utility lines? We, I don't think, I think we mentioned it briefly that just the project's not contemplating um, the relocation of those lines underground. Um, again, this is sort of a, you know, we have a, the city has grants um, for specific design elements here. Uh, utility relocation underground um, is extremely expensive um, per, per linear mile. Um, so right now it is not included uh, within the scope of this project. That is correct. Thank you, Matt. And uh, I'll just answer one, I guess, one other question I see on the slide out here, um, which is uh, if it's a walking city, why do pedestrians have less space than bikes? Um, they're, essentially along the entire um, corridor, there's a parallel walking area which is along the, the river walk. Um, we're doing our best here to widen sidewalks uh, where we can along uh, Sinatra Drive. Uh, but part of the impetus of this project is to create a dedicated bike facility uh, along Sinatra Drive, uh, which is the extension or I shouldn't say extension, the, the gap fill of the green circuit. Um, so that's why you'll see that there is, you know, maybe a, a gear towards uh, a bit more bike improvements along this section here. Um, and what we're doing for this project uh, is to create that dedicated bikeway to now give um, cyclists an opportunity to continue along from where Sinatra Drive South terminates um, essentially and dumps uh, either out onto Sinatra Drive South or onto the river walk. This now gives them an opportunity to continue in a dedicated bicycle facility all the way up to the connection to Sinatra Drive North. I think that clears everything out, Greg, at least on my end. Well, I'll let you, Ryan, do the closing remarks for this presentation. 
Sure. Uh, Greg, you're monitoring the question. So do we have any other more questions to address? One final question about the addition of flood sensors or alerts through this project. Oh, we want to take that one? <laughs> well, it depends. Um, we are adding, we have a project for the low lane areas in Hoboken to add flood sensors and gates. And um, the, I, don't, I don't contemplate Sinatra being part of that. And you may add anything else, Ryan, to that. Yeah, some of the, uh, a good portion of the project area here uh, adjacent to Castle Point is actually, despite being on the Hudson River waterfront uh, at a higher elevation than a, a good portion of Hoboken uh, further west. Um, so uh, it's less susceptible to flooding, uh, whether it's stormwater flooding or even coastal flooding uh, compared to other parts of the city. Uh, as Olga said, uh, you know, with limited resources, we kind of have to focus for now on uh, directing investments to uh, flood mitigation projects where, where we need it the most, um, the lowest lying areas of the city that have uh, the most chronic uh, flood events. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. And if there are no other questions, then I'll just uh, take it from here then. And I wanna say a, a big thank you to everyone who took the time to participate in this meeting. I know it's a beautiful evening out and um, it's probably not the, not the first thing that a lot of you would wanna be doing is um, you know, take, taking time to be a part of, of, of this public process uh, you know, through, through you know, virtual meeting indoors. Uh, on your computer or whatever, but uh, your, your participation is critical. And, um, you know, it's this feedback through the survey, through um, these public meetings, and more that is guiding the actual design process, as Mayor Bala mentioned earlier. Um, so we look forward to kind of debriefing after this meeting and uh, collecting the additional feedback that we got tonight. And then, as mentioned in the presentation, uh, having another survey that's going to follow up on uh, some of the concepts that you saw tonight to get additional feedback uh, from, from, from additional members of the public as well. Um, so, so yeah, we're, we're, early, we're early on in the process, a lot more to come. Um, so we look forward to continuing to uh, work with you on this project. So thank you very much and have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.